In today's video, we have all the latest news and rumors from around the NHL. Lots of reports indicate that there's ex expectation the Montreal Canadiens will be a very busy team this offseason, likely targeting another top young player like they have in the past couple of years around the NHL draft. Could Trevor Zegers or Kent Johnson be one of those players this year? We'll discuss that. Plus, the future of Capo Caco in New York could be very well determined by his performance here down the stretch and into the playoffs. We have a few players around the 1,000-game milestone in the NHL. Mike Medano is getting a statue unveiling tonight in Dallas. The Canes have extended goalie Stephenson Martin as well as some other updates from around the NHL. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot to cover here today. Uh, today is going to be the big unveiling for Mike Medano, who's being honored in the Dallas Stars organization, getting his own statue outside of their arena. Uh, this was something that was supposed to have been done earlier today, but due to rain, um, and I believe the weather situation there wasn't good, so overall they decided to hold off. It's going to be unveiled tonight during the first intermission of their game. So uh, I was hoping to be able to show a picture. I may be able to do that just yet depending on exact timing here of, of everything it's probably not going to be but certainly um, you know I'm sure it's going to be really nice but uh, I know for today's video I wanted to talk about the Medano statue being the fact that it's being unveiled today uh, but we're due to the delay I don't have any photos here of it just yet but Mike Medano's like arguably um, some people call him the greatest American born player of all time at least as of right now I think over time when he retires we're probably going to switch that honor to Patrick Kane eventually maybe Austin Matthews as well um, but Medano certainly one of the uh, the greatest to ever do it uh, in the United States there's no doubt about that had a terrific career with the bulk of it being in the Stars organization so certainly a well-deserved honor and I can't wait to see the statue unveiled there uh, in Dallas uh, signing in Carolina today as well uh, this morning they confirmed that goaltender Spencer Martin has earned a one-year contract extension a uh, league minimum 700 175,000. Of course, Martin was a, a waiver wire pickup earlier this year, so he's worked out quite nicely for Carolina, who's got uh, gone through quite a number of goalies this year. Uh, Ranta and Anderson, of course, started the year. Uh, Kachekov's got a fair bit of playing time. Martin's been in the mix there, too. So uh, they're certainly going to have their fair bit of options here as we get uh, later into the year and into the playoffs. Um, they're going to have some decisions to make in the offseason as well, but I kind of half wonder if uh, you know a Martin Kachekov tandem could be what we see next year. Uh, we've had the Anderson Ranta uh, short term contracts working together as a tandem the past little while, but um, I think it's fair to say Ranta likely won't be back in Carolina. Uh, Question marks around Freddie Anderson, though. Hard to say. Uh, he battled a you know pretty severe issue this year with blood clots and just recently returned. So we'll see what the means uh, what that means for the future of goaltending. In Carolina, uh, the Montreal Canadiens today did announce that head coach Marty St. Louis had to leave the team uh, to be he'll be away due to family reasons. Um, we don't know the you know specifics, of course. Uh, that's all private. Uh, assistant coach Trevor Latowski is going to be assuming his head coaching duties while he's away. And even though the team has not put out any statements. Um, you know, indicating anything more specific than family reasons. Uh, Pre-game tonight, uh, defenseman David Savard was interviewed, and he made mention that they were hoping to win the game for Marty's son. So I don't know if obviously something going on with um, with his son. So I don't know. Um, what it is, I just hope it's nothing too serious and everything will be okay. I uh, certainly wish them the best and our thoughts are with them, um, with the St. Louis family tonight as they're uh, dealing with this family situation. Uh, JVR is honored tonight as well in Boston uh, for the 1,000-game milestone. He's already passed the milestone a few games back, but uh, tonight he'll be honored in the Boston Garden, uh, likely be given uh, some nice uh, uh, you know, hardware for his longevity in the NHL. Obviously, uh, I believe tonight they're doing that against the Philadelphia Flyers as well, so certainly a team that he... Uh, you know, spent a lot of time with on multiple stints. So uh, nice to, to see everything go down there in Boston for his accomplishment. And I'm not sure if it's going to happen or not, because as I record this video, the game hasn't started yet. But TJ Oshie uh, is supposed to hit the 1,000-game milestone for the Washington Capitals tonight. Uh, according to head coach Spencer Carberry, though, earlier today, he indicated that Oshie would be a game-time decision. Uh, obviously still battling uh, an injury issue. So we'll see if he goes tonight and hits the milestone 
Stone or if it has to wait as the Capitals are scheduled to play the Vancouver Canucks. The Buffalo Sabres today recalled goaltender Devin Levi as well, so he comes back up to the NHL. The Sabres, of course, have uh, done well as of late. They get themselves into a... Um, not or not in a playoff spot. They're still a ways out, but they're certainly more, at least they're in a the mix. They have a chance. They're still mathematically and better situated than uh, you know some of their other division rivals like the Habs and the Senators. Uh, they uh, won more games here down the stretch and kind of get back into it, but it's still a very much tough uphill battle. And the odds are certainly still very much against them. But at least they're making it interesting. Uh, and right now the Sabers actually played the Red Wings this afternoon. They had a, a couple of games today, including the Islanders and Senators. At very early 12:30 um, Eastern time starts today, and the Red Wings picked up a much needed two points, ending their seven game losing streak against the Buffalo Sabres to kind of get them back ahead of the Islanders. The Islanders lost to the Sens in overtime, so they only picked up one point. Detroit picked up two, so that gets the Red Wings back in the mix there. The Red Wings and the Islanders are neck and neck for that final playoff spot. We also got word late yesterday that the New York Islanders have activated defenseman Robert Bortuzzo for long term injury reserve. In the Carolina Hurricanes tonight as they battle the Toronto Maple Leafs are without Tevu Teravainen. Uh, he is out tonight. He did not travel with the team and is going to miss at least tonight's game. They're playing the Senators next tomorrow on a back-to-back. I suspect he's likely going to miss that game as well. Uh, we could see a situation where the Florida Panthers might be without defenseman Dmitry Kulikov uh, for another game or two. It's hard to say, but in tonight's game against the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, which could be a first-round playoff series, which would be interesting to say the least, um, he was given a uh, match penalty and kicked out of the game uh, for an illegal check to the head against Connor Sheary of the Lightning. Um, usually the match penalties like that do come with an automatic review by a player's safety, uh, so we'll see um i'm not sure if he'll get additional time if i'm not mistaken i think they usually do end up giving a, a, a one game suspension at least um above that so we'll see what happens but yeah he could be in hot water with player safety after that uh, reckless hit to the head of connor sherry not only did it cost him a major penalty cost sherry an injury but uh, the Panthers scored while having possession on the play before the whistle went, and obviously the goal was called back here as well. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, according to Elliot Friedman, are very much interested in bringing back some of their uh, unrestricted free agents to be this offseason. Uh, some names mentioned include forwards Dakota Joshua and Teddy Bluger. No real big surprise that they would be interested in signing those guys and bringing them back. Uh, I think they've been quite pleased with the roles they've played for that franchise. But the other name mentioned by Friedman that was surprised Surprising was Tyler Myers on defense. That contract has been horrible really since the beginning of it. Um, and although, you know, obviously Freeman makes mention that it wouldn't be for the same money, uh, it would have to be less money and probably even less money that he could get on the open market. But there is interest to bring Myers back. Uh, they've been happy overall with their decor this year. And, you know, I guess, you know, I know Myers is a huge guy. But he has been a defensive liability um, for the bulk of that contract. Has he been better this year? He has been. I, I don't know, though. I think there might be some better options on the market. And to be honest, they're not the only players that need new contracts. Philip Peronic, who we've talked about in the last uh, video last day or two here, uh, it needs a new contract as well. And his contract is going to be taking a substantial rise in pay. Friedman seems confident they will get it done. Um, but there's been a lot of talk lately that they're still very much far apart on negotiations. Uh, Hronik's going to be looking for a deal. Somewhere's in the Mikhail Sergachev uh, contract park, uh, you could say. Uh, but the Canucks definitely don't want to pay him more than Quinn Hughes. Uh, the Hughes contract obviously was done on a shorter term. Um by far their top player, top defenseman. Uh, they certainly don't want any other D making more than him, which is very much reasonable and understandable, in my opinion. Ronick's been a great fit there um, and, you know, certainly put up good offensive numbers. So his stats do justify a significant raise, um, but whether or not they get that done uh, will be determined by him and his representative's ability to uh, – I guess the, how badly they want to stay would be the best way to put it. If they do, you know, insist on um, making more than Hughes, then it's going to likely result in a trade, which could completely go uh, change how they go about handling that blue line in the offseason and the personnel there. But I'm just really, really surprised to hear 
that the Canucks want to keep Tyler Myers after the past, like, four years especially, where he's been criticized heavily by media and fans alike. And, yeah, he's been a bit better this year. But, you know, I guess if they can get him to sign in a really cheap contract, but... I don't know. That, that seems risky to me. We'll see how the Canucks decide to proceed. Now, the theme of today's video in the rumor mill is young players who might be looking for or need a change of scenery. I want to start first in New York, looking at a recent article here in the New York Post by Molly Walker, looking at the future of Capo Caco, of course, with the New York Rangers. Uh, Caco, um, unlike his counterpart, Alexi Lafreniere, hasn't quite taken off offensively and is still you know, not really putting up his weight and numbers, so to speak. Like the, nuff, the numbers offensively, still not where they need to be. Lafreniere's taken some good steps this year. Uh, certainly produced more. Um, still not an elite level like you'd expect from a first overall pick, but based on what the team has uh, given him for a role and where he's been placed in the lineup, his playing time, line mates, at least you've seen good progress. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, some other young players around the league have started to pop this year as well. I know a guy like Quentin Byfield comes to mind in Los Angeles, but a guy like Capo Caco still not really all that offensively strong at the NHL level. Uh, Walker's report here essentially states where Kako needs a new contract coming up, that his future with the Rangers could be very well determined uh, by his playoff uh, performance this year. Obviously, the Rangers are well on pace to be a playoff team. Not much we do know who they'll play in the first round. Exactly where they'll finish still remains to be seen. But at this point, you know, Kako and the Rangers – you know, they're definitely going to be looking uh, to do some damage in the playoffs and go on a deep run. What kind of role he plays and how he contributes to that will certainly have a huge role on his next contract. And I think as well, it's fair to say the future with his organization. Now, Molly Walker doesn't exactly get so much into that as more focusing on how the contract's going to go in the next uh, negotiation here. But at the same time, this has been a long time coming. It's a lot of years now. Of course, Kako was the second overall pick behind Jack Hughes. Uh, of course, that's quite a few years ago now. They've had lots of time to get through their rookie contracts and moved on from that. And still, um, you know, not great offensive stats for a player who was expected to be a really solid top six forward who could help transform a franchise. Uh, not quite living up to the hype. Like I said, Alexa Lafreniere for his part up until recently hasn't really done so either, but he has taken a big step this year to get closer to that level. Uh, so we'll be curious to see. It's certainly a player to watch in the off season for sure. Uh, I'm not convinced at this point that he will be a Ranger long-term and think for his sake, it might be best for a change of scenery, but we will see. I know there were some talk around the NHL trade deadline as Chris Jury was trying to make some additions and upgrades for the team that Kako could possibly be used as trade bait, and they kind of, you know, didn't go there. So the fact that they didn't go there seems that they're not ready to do that. But like I said, if he has a strong breakout performance in the playoffs, that could very well change things drastically. And maybe his role increases with the team goes forward, gets a better contract, and, you know, kind of go from there. But at the same time, if he continues to not really be an offensive threat, you know, possibly, you know, even end up as a scratch in the playoffs wouldn't be shocking. Um, then I do wonder what his future holds with the team going forward. We'll see. Well, obviously, this is a big stretch of hockey coming up for his career and see where his future holds. And, of course, as we talked about it before, several different reporters, uh, all the insiders have mentioned that they expect the Montreal Canadiens to be a very active and busy team this offseason. Now, we've talked a fair bit about Trevor Zegras possibly being a target of the Canadiens. Uh, there's a lot of talk, of course, out of the Ducks organization that – uh, they very well could move him. Now, GM Pat Verbeek recently has denied those rumors, saying that he fully um, you know, wants Zegers to be with the Ducks and expects him to return soon from injury, uh, denied the fact that there was any trade discussions around that player at the NHL trade deadline, and uh, kind of moved forward from there. Now, I don't doubt, though, based on all the intel from all those reporters, that all their sources can't be wrong. Uh, I do think it's fair to say that the negotiation for Zegers' last contract – Last offseason was contentious and took a long time to get together. You know, I do think that there's also a, I guess you could say that the team and the coach might not be the, the most uh, biggest fans of the style of play of Trevor Zegers. Um, so we'll see how things evolve there. No guarantee that he gets traded, 
But I do think if the team came along, a team came along with the right offer, that something they'll definitely look at. I think he's less of an untouchable than their other young stars like McTavish and Carlson and Mitnikov and you know to some degree Troy Terry and those guys as well. Um, so we'll see. But another name that really hasn't gotten a lot of attention in the uh, rumor mill as far as targets around the Habs because it's very much expected that Ken Hughes wants to add another top six forward. And if he can use his draft capital uh, to go ahead and help accomplish that because they do have a lot of picks on the, on the books right now. Now, another name to watch would be Kent Johnson out of Columbus. I mean, not a given and he gets moved. We're about to see a, a change in general manager. We know, obviously, that Kekalainen was let go. They don't have a new GM here just yet. So it's difficult to say how they're going to feel about things, but there's been some speculation that some of the younger players in the Jackets organization very well could be available. Uh, and Johnson's name is not the only one mentioned. Even some of the Russian players were you know, considering heading back to Russia earlier this year. Uh, we've heard Line could be available as well. He's still fairly young. There could be a lot of change in Columbus uh, this year as well after another down, very unsuccessful NHL season. Like I said, that organization has made multiple mistakes recently when it comes to the coaching changes and some of the moves. It's just there's a lot of unhappiness going on through that organization from what we've heard. So at the end of the day, could Johnson be available? Former first round pick, uh, had a real solid run in college hockey before turning pro. He definitely took a step back this year, um, spent some time in the minors. I'm not sold on the fact that the Jackets are completely in love with this player and might be open to moving him for the right package coming back. Uh, like I said, the Habs have a lot of picks. They have some other young players of their own that won't always all be able to play with the organization. Maybe it's a swap of some sort. I can see there maybe being a fit. So we'll see. No guarantees, of course, but we know Johnson and Zegers could be available. We also know that Ken Hughes likely wants to make another big splash around the draft, acquire another top young player. That seems to be their goal, preferably somebody who can play a top six role for them. And while I think these are two names to watch and could be prime targets as we get closer to the offseason in the NHL draft. Let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around, and we'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.